Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to talk about CSS attribute selectors. CSS attribute selectors select HTML elements based on their attributes. So an attribute is a key value pair that you provide, it's, for the most part it is a key value pair, pair, that you provide in the opening tag for any element. Now, because this whole idea of CSS, um, uh, styling with CSS revolves around selecting something, then styling it. That's why there are like a lot different, a lot of different types of uh, selectors in CSS, and each of them is unique to a certain criteria, a certain uh, not criteria, a certain situation that you might that you might come up with, uh, that you might end up with, and you might think, okay, how can I select this element? And you're gonna say, okay, I can use an attribute selector for that. So we're going to talk about that in this lecture. Now, this is the uh, HTML markup that we had from our uh, previous lectures. I've just changed some stuff in here. I've added a title attribute to the H1, which is the title. And the title is going to be highlighted whenever you hover on it. It's like a simple tooltip. And then we have this href for this anchor element. Then we have another href. And for the article, we have the ID. All of them, all, all of them, all of them are attributes. It doesn't matter if it is an ID, class, title, href, whatever. It's an attribute. We do have different selectors for classes and IDs because they're so cool and so unique. But in case you were wondering, well, what about the, the other attributes? I mean, are they left out? No, we can select HTML elements using those attributes as well. Now, there is a special syntax for uh, an attribute selector and that is very simple it's just a pair of brackets so I'm gonna say article let's say you have 500 articles you have 10 articles I'm just gonna create another one and I'm gonna say something uh, I'm just gonna provide in a paragraph lorem uh, whatever let's just save that and I'm gonna give it another H uh, uh, you have to keep this in mind that you have to have only one H1 in your page because H1 is the most important title. I mean, technically you could have 1000, but that's not a best practice because um, browsers and um, where search engines, they categorize your web pages depending on the H1 that it has. So if you do provide more than one H1, this SEO of that web page is going to be reduced. It means that no one is going to find it easy on in whenever they're searching the or browsing the internet. Internet. That's as much as I'm going to tell you about search engine optimization. That is one thing that you need to keep in mind that you you need to have only one H1 in each website, like in each page. So for this one, I'm going to do H2. That's why we have H2 all the way H6. I'm going to say uh, birds. There we go. So here we have this. And uh, so I'm going to say, I'm going to grab an article. And whenever you want to provide the attribute, you just have to open up brackets. The rest of the syntax is the same as the HTML. Just go ahead and grab it directly from the HTML and put it right here. It is that simple. Just have to provide brackets. And I'm gonna say, okay, I wanna give it a background color of light slate gray, some padding, some color, and save it. There we go. Why is the other article not selected? Because it doesn't have this specific attribute. I mean, you could select it through the ID as well. I'm just teaching you how you can select it through attributes because ID before being an ID is an attribute keep that in mind so attribute is like this big umbrella under which you have IDs classes HRFs titles and a lot more stuff now um, let's grab this H1 let's say you want to grab it by the attribute title how can you do it first write the name of the element and then provide it with that attribute very cool, right? So I'm going to say font size uh, 75 pixels. Let's save that and there we go. And you might want to change the font family as well. There is something that I need to tell you about these font families and for that I need to zoom in. So you can see these uh, lines coming out of different corners of this, this uh, letter. 
like these spears or these points or these like pins this font is called uh, serif uh, and I, I believe serif is refers to these lateral things coming out of this so you can see this lateral thing here I'm gonna zoom really in for you that's 500 percent so you can see these lateral things coming out of there this is called a serif font the most prominent serif font which you have definitely work with is Times New Roman in Microsoft Word or in any other word uh, text edit editing software that is by default there and that is the default font size I believe for this one as well it, it certainly looks like Times New Roman if you want if you want to find out whether or not this is the default font size you know where to, uh, font family sorry you know where to find it right so you're gonna come in here and you're gonna you're gonna grab where is the h1 here is the h1 go to compute it and it is font family so go to f where are you buddy font family times new roman i was right i'm very wise so you can see we have times new roman this is the default font size so the things that i told you in the previous lecture now that you specify a different font family you will basically be changing this one you're basically manipulating css properties you're not creating new properties you're manipulating existing defined properties so uh, so we have uh, serif and then we have sans serif which is the opposite of serif sans doesn't have those things coming out of the letters sans uh, ser sans serif is um like smooth very smooth fonts and that is like ser serif is used for like um novels like very old novels like the moby dick that i do have the book for that it is like i think 150 years old think I, I might not be right it's like very old i bought it from a different country it's like very very old book uh, and then that 150 years was <laughs> that was a figure of speech like it is very old and in those kind of old novels you're going to see times new roman but in like cool awesome minimalistic web pages you provide sans serif like Arial. this is sans serif there we go so when you save it now you can see it is smooth nothing is coming out of it and I'm sure you understand what I mean by it. So we have Arial, and we do have Franklin, uh, Gothic, Medium, Arial, Narrow. And so whenever you're providing font families, the final word usually specifies the font family. So in font family, you have font style and then family. The family is sans serif. This is the font name or the font style. So when you save it, it's a little bit different, but the concept is the same let's take a look at that here where are you font family and here it is now you can see you've basically changed that and you might have noticed something else that whenever uh, it is the browser it is a little bit grayed out it's a little bit like sort of deactivated when it is uh, defined by the browser the CSS property but when it is defined by you it is highlighted you can see it's now highlighted and if you come here, if you take this out, you're going to only see the ones which are technically highlighted by you. But that statement is not accurate at all. Because these ones, you have not applied the margin. We have not applied that. But we have just applied the color and this font family. So now you understand, okay, how actually CSS works. And that's it for its attribute selectors. I'm going to give you one more attribute, and that is for anchor just make sure you really understand that you can select it literally by anything so i'm going to say uh the better one the best one is going to be font i'm going to say text decoration text decoration and background color black uh color white save that there we go padding 20 pixels there we go so you can see you can select it through any attribute. With this, our lecture comes to an end. See you in the next one.